try to get to know my students through assignments. When I get a new group of students, I have them complete interest inventories. I have them fill out, you know, informational surveys that tell me what they like to do in their free time. Um, I really am running over on time. Uh, you can study, if you have students who, a uh, large group of students or a few students that come from a culture that's really unfamiliar to you, I encourage you to get a book. Of course, I'm a librarian, so I would encourage you to get a book. But go to the library, check out books. There are books that can help you under, give you some insight into any culture. It also helps to uh, go out into the community and event, cult, attend cultural events outside of your comfort zone, if that's possible to you. Um, if that's the resources you have open to you, build relationships with your students and their family. Build relationships in the community across cultures. All of that helps you to develop your cultural competence. And then give your students a chance to be an expert too. Give them a chance to share their resources and talk about the things that they're experts on. Um, reversing the roles and giving them some of the power to be the expert really also demonstrates that you respect their knowledge, not just that they need to respect yours. Um, and finally, I always think it's good to take a risk. You have to model what you expect from your students. We ask them to take risks every day, to do things that they're not good at, that, they're, that are new to them, or that they may be uncomfortable with. You have to do the same. I always sing when I read books that have a passage of singing in it. I'm the worst singer in the world. Um, but it's good for them to see us try things we're bad at, and it's good for them to see us be bad at things too. I try to be spontaneous and take the unplanned departure when it's a unique opportunity. You can't usually get the unique opportunity back, but you can always make up your math lesson. Um, I talk about things that make me uncomfortable. I ask my students to talk about things that make them uncomfortable. Most of us probably aren't very comfortable talking about race in a mixed um, race group. However, it's essential if we teach. Uh, it's essential no matter what students we teach. They're all, they all live in an incredibly diverse society. Um, and there's nothing wrong with saying that you don't know. It took me a long time to stop bluffing my way through when I didn't know um, the answer to a question and just say, I don't know, I'll look it up. Let's get back to that one tomorrow. Does that really happen? Does anybody else know? Sometimes they have bad information, but sometimes they have it right. And that's all I have. So do you guys have questions or comments? I would. I'd send out a permission slip to their parents. In, in Texas, it was not really, I think it depends a lot on the community you teach in. At my school, we give students rides home in our cars all the time without getting parental permission. I probably could get in trouble for it, but because my principal does it and is okay with us doing it, I'll do it as well. Um, it's good, though, to follow your school's guidelines. I think most schools will allow you to do things if you get parental, parental permission, especially written parental permission. Uh, you talked a lot about kind of uh, muddling through and, and also just trying to get past that first year of teaching, especially the one in many aspects of the UBD students who are, like you said, insulting you in every way possible. Mm -hmm. I, and I think that's a really tough spot for a lot of new teachers to be in. It's, it's probably what we fear most. Um, is are you going to be able to deal with that sort of um, environment? Yes. Um, and I'm just curious, how, how do you get through something like that? Because that's where a lot of teachers end up turning their so what is it that kept you going? That can help us to keep going with that. I really tried to classify my bad days as bad days. How many experienced teachers in the room? How many experienced teachers who have cried at least once at the end of the school day in your car? That's more than half, right? I cried every, almost every day that first year of teaching in my car on my way home. I would develop, develop like my first 10 minutes to cry. It helps to get it out. Not in front of your students, but you know, it helps to get it out when you leave, to try to leave work at work, and to just try to get through your first year is really hard, much harder than the subsequent years. Um, just because you get more of an idea of what to expect, don't take it personally, and try not to react. They really do it for a reaction. If you, you know, listen to students interact with each other there, they have so many ways to insult each other that, you know, when I try to look my ear every once in a while. Um, when you were talking about all the different you always seem to do something besides go teach, like some kind of extracurricular. How did you find time for that, especially when you were first starting? I, I didn't do any extracurriculars my 
my first year teaching. Met, not my first two, actually, nothing at all. And I see some first year teachers, I've seen first year teachers in my school take on extracurriculars, and I, and, and I marvel at the fact that they're, that they're willing to ex overextend themselves when they're already overextended, and it's great. However, um, hopefully most of us will be in teaching for a long time, so I would, I would have never taken on an extracurricular during my first couple of years teaching until I had my major planning done and we kind of let part of that piece go and replace it with that stress. <coughs> Which is hard because that's you can't fake that. It has to it has to really be authentic. You you can't ask your students questions about themselves and then not care about the answers, because then they, and they'll know their their detect their detectors for you know fakeness are so so high compared to I think how much fakeness we learn to tolerate as adults. Students just I find that they just don't have it. Um, so you have to listen actively and, and be watching them. And even if they're looking at their paper, you cannot look at your paper. You have to look at them or somewhere around them that lets you know that you're really paying attention when you ask them things. I think it's also good to um, make sure if, you, if you're really trying to spark a conversation with a student that you have time to follow through on it. You know, don't try to get into a big conversation with your students in the five minute passing time before classes because you can't, you can't really follow through. But I think it's really important to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, when you learn their names. I always <coughs> take the first couple weeks of the school year to just say my students' names continuously. Like, thank you, Martha. Thank you for sharing, Martha. Thanks for your paper. Your paper looks great, Martha. And oh, I'll have a great weekend, Martha. And the more times that I repeat them, I find that, you know, I build the habit and I'm able to, because nothing undermines you like not knowing somebody's name, especially when they see you every single day. Um, What were the similarities in uh, Latino culture between Texas and New York? Between Texas and New York, none. There, there were Spanish, um, and the Spanish is even different because most of the people in the community that I lived in in New York were from the islands, and most of them were also not first generation to the U.S. They had been living here for generations. Their families had been living here for generations already. Um, between Texas and Minnesota, there are considerable similarities in my students. Um, populations because they're largely Mexican and Mexican American. Some of my students now are Central American in Minneapolis. Um, there's some, you know, kind of sizable Central American communities, I think, depending on what you're teaching. But there's more cultural.